Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be showing y'all how to install an injector in a 7.3 power stroke. I had this uh, old 96 F-250, uh, or I'm sorry, F-350 dually, F-250 dually, anyway. Oh, uh, F-350 dually just kind of sitting around. We uh, we haven't been driving it in a while. I've been driving my white crew cab, um, but uh, I lost some, uh, some, in, uh, some injector O-rings in, in my truck. It's got bigger injectors in it, so we pulled those things out and sent them off. Um, it kind of made me think I probably should do a, an install video. So when we pulled this truck out of the weeds, we um, we decided to uh, to film the install of the replacing of this one injector. We kind of figured out I had a, an injector bad several months ago, and like everything else, put it on the back burner and don't do it. So, but today we're going to do it. We're going to show you how, how you do it. I got up here on top of the motor here, so I can kind of I don't know give you a little more visual of, of what we're doing. Um, I kind of narrowed it down to it's either injector number seven or eight. Um, there, unfortunately on these older motors, there's really no good way of telling exactly which injector it is without pulling the valve cover off, running the truck with the valve cover off and actually manually unplugging the, the number seven or, or number eight injector. Because the way these plugs work is there's four plugs on these, uh, uh, like 94 to 97 motors. The under valve cover harnesses have two plugs per, uh, per harness. And, uh, it represents, say this is, um, this is injector number one and this is injector number three. This represents the plug for both of those, uh, uh, vice versa with, oh, you know what? I said that wrong. I said seven and eight. How about that? Yeah, you did. Yeah, it's not seven and eight. It's five and seven. What am I talking about here? Um, so it's either five or seven here. I'm losing my mind, I guess. I don't know. Either way. Um, so we're going to pull this valve cover off and we're going to fire the truck up and then we're going to manually unplug each injector and figure out which one doesn't make a difference in sound with the truck idling. That injector obviously will, uh, will be the problem. Um, you can also kind of tell by the oil output from the uh, oil return squirters. Uh, the problem injector will probably be putting out less oil than the rest of them at idle. Um, that will probably be pretty hard to see on camera. So. We're going to try to hopefully do it by um, by audio. Um, I guess we're going to go, go ahead and get started now of actually pulling the valve cover off. And uh, once we get to that point, then uh, then we'll, we'll fire the truck up and we'll kind of show you what we got going on. The, uh, the 7.3 Power Stroke is, is backwards from the conventional V8 as far as uh, odds on the passenger side, evens on the driver's side. So this is one, three, five, and seven. Um, we're gonna focus mostly on five and seven. We're, uh, I feel like it's one of these two here is what was, what's giving us our trouble. Um, like I say, just based off of unplugging this, uh, this plug here and, and it not changing as much. Uh, we're going to narrow it down to which one it is by actually firing the truck up and manually unplugging each one of these plugs here with the truck running. Doesn't hurt the truck. I don't care what anybody says. Um, that's, that's the way I've always done it. It's the way I'll always continue to do it. People will tell you that it will. It doesn't. They're wrong. If you, I don't know if you can focus down on this one here or not, but uh, you can see where the glow plugs have, have have burnt this part of the harness right here on the inside most of the time it's on the truck side of the plug kind of burns here this one's actually burnt on the inside of the harness this harness really should be replaced um, but if we don't have to we're not going to just because it's a spare truck and we don't have to so um, 
anyway and we might find that that's actually the uh um the problem if that's the case then we'll replace it not an injector but we're fixing to find out so okay Just kind of show you here this is a uh, this glow plug is actually smoking currently after i cranked the truck and it heated the glow plugs i guess we know the glow plug relay is still working because it is definitely still melting that harness we're uh we may wind up actually replacing this harness anyway just because you have to pull it out change the injectors so we're going to go ahead and test this and i guess we're going to go ahead and replace it anyway since it is bad you get a real good shot of that right there She's done. She gone. Hmm. Hundred thousand mile harness. Well, yeah. What were you going for? It's going for you to say something else, but do do. There you go. <laughs> Thanks, mom. <laughs> We'll get our camera guy straight for, uh, here in a minute, I guess. Maybe. All right, so these little things here, these are the oil squirters. This is where the excess oil comes out of the injector after it's uh, used to compress the fuel, and, uh, and it dumps the oil out of this little squirter here. You have to take it off first. You will break it. You have to have it. Take it off first. It's a number five millimeter Allen. Uh, Powder coat them five or six hundred dollars. I have fresh looking bumpers. Oh no. Oh, oh my. Well, that's not how you do it. Oh my. That's not how you're supposed to do that. There you go. Oh, oil squirter. Not on the ground. Now that we got the oil squirter off, what we want to do is there is a bolt here. It's an eight millimeter and a bolt here. We want to take the back one off. It's not real tight, it's not a real big bolt, so keep that in mind when you're putting it back on. Don't strong arm the thing and break it off because it will be a pain to get out. Ask me how I know. How do you know, Chris? I have broke it. Using them German torque methods. Good and tight. Good and tight. Three ugga duggas. Mm. <laughs> you don't even need one with this bolt. Okay, hey, okay. little bitty bolt. Little bitty eight millimeter bolt. Okay, the way this thing works here is my camera guy will have to get closer. That's the first way it works. Can my camera guy see? Yes. Okay, see how this thing moves? You wanna move it so that it doesn't sit on this little shelf here that actually holds for this bolt. Just by pushing it up and then you get underneath the, the flange with the pry bar and you just kinda push up a little bit. It's gonna be a little tight. I don't know how long it's actually been in the truck. Mm. Which is a apparent, tight. apparently been a while in this truck. And one of the reasons why I'm sure that this injector is bad. All right. It goes. Pops out. Nobody died. Not yet. And then the injector comes out. Don't be alarmed when you hear the oil fall, flowing down into the cylinder hole. Um, I'm going to show you how to get that out here in just a second. Okay, so you can kind of see. That O-ring right there is probably our culprit. It is gone. So, ta-da, there's a problem. And so, so that we all know what, why would that O-ring being bad cause it to miss and not, uh, apparently so, not work, work at all from the sounds of it. Let's, uh, 
it's cleaned off a little bit. This this oh, O-ring. No. I ain't got you. Ah! This O-ring here is part of the oil control. So what's happening is, is you're not keeping your oil and fuel separated. So the truck uh, truck can't build pressure, can't compress the fuel in the injector, and then you've got a really nasty injector nozzle because the uh, fuel hasn't been compressed properly, and it winds up just eventually clogging the nozzle up and uh, causing all kinds of, uh, all kinds of problems. So that would put oil in your fuel, right? Not, no. no, not necessarily. The internal O-rings are what put oil in your fuel. That's actually what's wrong with my truck. Right. My truck has bad internal O-rings and oil uh, oil's going in the fuel. Fuel in the fuel bowl looks like two-stroke uh, two gas. Um, you wind up two gallons low on oil. That's, that's how it works. This is what the O-ring is supposed to look like. Nice and clean. Mm -hmm. So this is why I was talking about how this thing slides. You can get a better idea. You can see that little shelf there. Um, and then this is where the old squirter bolts down. All right, so to show y'all how the uh, how you get the oil out of the cylinder once you took the injector out, we will take the glow plug out, which also should not be in there. Should not be in there very tight, and you shouldn't have any problem getting it out unless somebody was cheap and bought auto lights and broke them off because auto lights tend to seize up in the motor in the head um don't be cheap just buy motorcraft glow plugs it's just so much easier on you in the long run make your life far easier when you have to service it what happens is is the auto lights they have a built they build a buildup of carbon on the end of the element and the element doesn't want to come through it seizes up you break the glow plug in half then you got to pull the cylinder head off to fix the motor Seen it way too many times. I just don't take those risks anymore. Low plug, it probably has seen its better days, but like I said, it's a spare truck that was in the weeds. We're not gonna worry about it too much. Okay, here's the new injector. I oiled up the, the new O-rings on the injector just to uh, help them slide down the cylinder a little easier without tearing one. Obviously, you wanna put the injector in the right way, and then just kinda, you can kinda feel them seat a little bit and I was unprepared without a, without a mallet so I had to get one this is a piston mallet you don't have to have a piston mallet I just like to use one to knock the injector in the hole a dead blow hammer or something a brass hammer something that's not gonna mess up the solenoid on top of the injector and you just want to give it a couple of good firm whacks on top of it to get it to seat you'll feel it seat you'll know what you'll know what's happening when you do it So kind of when it stops jingling, you can kind of hear it change just yeah. when you know it's seated. Yeah, and it just kind of clicks into place. Uh, the hold down kind of falls around the bolt that you left in the motor. And, and then we're going to put the bolt back in and tighten this injector down and just set the valve cover back on top of it. And then we're going to spin the motor over. And uh, what's going to happen is, is since we have the glow plug out, it's going to blow the oil that's in that cylinder out of the glow plug hole. Um, that's the reason why I put the valve cover back on it so that we don't wind up with oil all over the engine compartment. Uh, we're trying to contain the mess. Wow. Ta da! Ta da! Something I almost forgot to do. You want to unplug the other side so the <laughs> truck does not crank because it will start on four cylinders. Dude. <laughs> oh shit. Dude. Damn. What the heck, man? <laughs> what the heck, man? I have never had it do that before. Holy cow. Dude. <laughs> Look at all to my bag. Dude. Oh, at this point, there's nothing you can do but laugh about it. Oh my That's fucking gosh. Okay, so now that we've learned what not to do, um, and yes, thanks. I didn't need the oil bath. Yeah, well, um, the one step that I fatally forgot to do <laughs> was put the bolts in the valve cover 
when you put, when you put it back on to blow the oil out of the out of the uh, glow plug hole because it comes out with a vengeance. Um, yeah. Did we see what it did to everything else? I mean, you gonna get a picture of my my uh, junk cart there? Is that what you're doing? No, I, it's trying to get the truck. It's a little bright, but you get the idea. There's. Yeah, it's a uh, look at this. This is with a valve cover on it. Yeah. Look at that. It's on it for a second or two. Terrible, terrible. Not gonna lie, I haven't laughed that hard in a while. Okay, so I went ahead and finished while uh, while Princess was cleaning his camera. That's not true. I uh, I went ahead and finished um, uh, blowing the rest of the oil out after I put bolts in the valve cover. <laughs> um, so we took the valve cover back off, and uh, it's time to put the glow plug back in the hole, which is what I'm doing currently. Uh, you're gonna want to make sure you snug this thing up pretty good because obviously it does have quite a bit of compression on it. Just a little. Oh, that's what we're gonna do. We we'll just put it in here and just give it a good snug. Doesn't have to be over tight. You will break the darn thing. Um, German specs. German specs. I'm sure it has a torque spec to it, and I'm sure that there's some purist out there that just. Uh, uh, you know about died watching me just snug that thing down but i promise it's not gonna hurt it um everything's a lot more slippery with oil on it i wonder why huh. so we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and um and get this uh, under valve cover harness put on um the more tricky ones are to actually get the glow plug pins on there's a pain in the butt and whoever designed that really hated mechanics I guess we gotta worry about the underside of the hood rusting for a while. Nope. Or my camera. Or your camera. Gosh, man. Okay, plug this back in. Plug the other side back in. Can't forget about that. This one's always in an awkward spot. Okay. All right, we're gonna fire it up with the valve cover off, but we have the glow plug in the hole, so we should be okay. I'm still standing back, though. Oh, pansy. Listen. Listen, Linda. This will take a while to start because we drained down the high pressure oil rail on the, on the passenger side of the truck, so the, the pump has got to build pressure back up in the system before it's going to actually start. So when you're doing this, don't be alarmed that it takes forever to crank over. In fact, sometimes you might actually have to add a little bit of oil into the reservoir to get it to fire up because the low pressure pump won't always keep up with the demand while the pump is trying to pressurize the system. And for the first 50 miles or so after you've changed the injectors and or as we're doing injector, um, it's gonna be hard to start. It'll take a little while, it'll finally fire up. You'll see what I'm talking about here in a second.
Okay, so we're gonna we're kind of filming a conclusion to uh, to the fiasco of so-called installing 7.3 injectors that you would think I'd be much better at. That apparently I forgot ever bit. I of. trusted you. You did. That's what you get for trusting people. You notice the very first thing you said after that happened was just pure laughter, not "Hey, are you okay?" Oh, it was fantastic. It's the funniest thing ever. <laughs> totally made my week. Good. <sighs> the camera survived. Yeah. It's well lubricated now. Yeah. You don't have to worry about it wearing out parts. <laughs> okay, so we learned what not to do. Yep. By uh, not bolting down the valve cover and not uh, not putting the old squirter on once we fire the truck up. We oiled the outside of the turbo, too. And that just added, like, what, two hours to the whole fiasco? It felt like. Pretty much, man, because we had to clean up everything, but, you know, whatever. Whatever. But really and truly, what uh, with, with changing the one injector, with, I guess, kind of having the tools right there handy, it do, what do you think, the whole the whole ordeal, if we'd have done it, if we'd have done it without the extra fiascos, would have been, what, two hours, maybe? Yeah, if that. I mean, especially if we weren't filming it, you yeah. know, with in, in and out, yeah, in and out time, you're probably an hour and a half at the most, you know, especially since you supposedly already knew what you were doing. I mean, you had most of, most of it down, so. Well, we just conveniently forgot. Yeah. Yeah. Made for a lot better TV. That it did. <laughs> I just wish you'd have got yourself filmed. <laughs> <laughs> Spectacular. But anyway, I'm really so, surprised you didn't take a picture. I should have. We could have put we could have put that on the on the show. But um, uh, but I don't know. So uh, so so really and truly, it's it's a pretty straightforward uh, install removal and install. Um, it's just a matter of it takes a couple hours to do, but it's nothing nothing you really need any kind of special tooling for. But the special the most special thing that I had was um, was the wiggle sockets, which is not 100% necessary. Right. It's just I used them because I had them. Right. Like I, I would say, if you were doing it, you'd want to have a battery charger or jumper cables around because restarting it's going to be a pain. It didn't. Uh, uh, it didn't help that the truck had been sitting for a while. Right, and we started it up, and it started pretty fast, and then we had to shut it down because we didn't right, have which, the oil sugar on it, which drained all of the juice out of the batteries. Right. Um, suggestion: If you're going to do all all eight of them, and both rails are drained, the what I would definitely do is I would um, uh, I would just put a, a charger on it and just kind of you know a, a twenty amp charge while you're doing it, just you know just a just a low charge and just to kind of maintain the batteries because you got the hood open, the hood lights on. You know, whatever, and then you do a lot of cranking on it, trying to prime the oil system and everything. So it's, it, to to me, it's just easier in that way that you don't have to worry about the batteries going dead while you're trying to start it. And anyway, so that, I mean, that's yeah. that's the biggest thing that like, I guess I didn't think about doing the entire time was was putting that on there. Right, and you know, you got your big pry bar for pulling it out, for getting that injector popped out. Yeah, so. I mean, what like a. Uh, uh, a 12 14 inch pry bar is really about all you need you don't need yeah. anything special yep a little bit short one you're not going to have uh you're not going to have enough leverage and then obviously too long one you're not going to be able to get into the very back injectors and stuff like that it's going to be kind of a fiasco but mm -hmm. um the but, driver's side is is the easier side we did the hard side the the biggest deal is uh is those lower bolts down below the ac box is the, the hardest ones to get to everything else is pretty straightforward yeah um, there was, there was nothing, we didn't run into anything that was hard or confusing or anything like that. It's just, no, it's, I mean, it, it's obviously not as easy to do as 12 valve injectors cause they're not just like right on top of the motor, but, but it's a lot better than a six, seven power oh, stroke. Jeez, it's so much, so much easier than a six, seven power stroke. You don't have to pull the exhaust manifolds off and all the other crap to get to them intake manifolds and all that crap. It's just six, seven injectors or six, seven power stroke injectors, uh -huh. six, seven Cummins injectors aren't terrible. But, um, but you don't have to reprogram anything like you do on six seven. You don't have to. Well, that's the beauty of these trucks. They're just um, uh, they're simple. I mean, there's not much to them. There's what two computers on the whole truck, and yeah. you know you got simple parts. And let's be honest, what like what was it like thirteen hundred bucks buys a whole set of injectors that are stage ones. There's something like something that. Something like that. Yeah. yeah, it's it's pretty close to that. So you're under two grand for a high performance set of injectors. You know, yeah, right. install like yeah, if you can exactly. do it yourself for sure. That's including yeah. oil change and fuel filters and the mm -hmm. whole the whole gamut. So I would uh, 
I mean, it's just kind of, I know I'm a big advocate uh, for, for OBS trucks, but I mean, if you think about it, they're just, they're really not that expensive to maintain. Um, I, cam sensors used to be 200 bucks, now they're $25, you know, or whatever they are. They're, they're cheap, man, 50 bucks maybe. Yeah. But still, you know, and there's, there's only like four or five sensors on the whole thing that like would keep the truck from running. Right. Um, then none of them are terribly expensive at this well, point. Well, now that everybody figured out to use good cam sensors, you don't have that whole play you know, like where the truck's dying going down the road you're like ah, i gotta keep right. one in the glove box you're right i still keep one in the glove box i'm just kind of paranoid like that you are yeah so don't buy cheap parts yeah kids don't buy cheap parts like we were saying with the glow plugs yeah don't buy i mean just don't don't buy the cheapest thing you can buy because it's going to come back to bite you in the butt and then you're going to have to do it again and again and again. You're going to get mad and you're going to go try to buy a new truck and you're going to pay a thousand dollar a month truck note and <laughs> you know, it just doesn't make sense. Right. Uh -huh. So just buy quality stuff. You have a quality truck, you know, you wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't go to the cheapest doctor. Some people would, but you know, um, you know, you, you want to make sure that your truck's running good too, because you don't want to break down going down the road. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. It's, uh, as far as that goes, it's, uh, it's pretty, Everything's pretty straightforward. Everything's uh, pretty uh, pretty easy to do. Uh, really and truly, the hardest thing to do is just remember to make sure you do all the steps in the right order. <laughs> yeah, and you don't blow all over, all over everything. Everything. I did take the truck and have it detailed after we did this. That way, I didn't burn it to the ground. It did smell awful funny driving it over there. When you were all the old, when material. you were just sitting there running with the hood shut, it was just smoldering like a dragon or something breathing under the hood. I was like, well, that's. It's one way to clean it, I guess. Just burn it off. I mean, you know, if it catches on fire, it catches on fire, I guess. But yeah, then we'd had a real good show. You know, everybody's gonna watch this. Go, these morons. And are they gonna be wrong? Not entirely. No. Not entirely. No. No, they'd be wrong. Because I knew what I was doing. I just. Uh, I have the excuse. I've never done the seven three injectors, so I. Didn't. So so what? You're ignorant. And I'm stupid. Is mm -hmm. that the way that works? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. All right. As long as we got that clear. All right. Well, I don't think. I mean, I think that pretty much covers everything as far as uh, as far as the way that this uh, this whole install went. Um, if y'all like these videos, definitely don't uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. So you, uh, it's much more convenient to uh, to to catch up on all the the new installs and uh, bloopers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can't miss those. Yep. But um, but yeah, let's uh, let's definitely like and subscribe. Do it. Yes. Definitely do it. And uh, and stay tuned for the next one, guys and gals. Gotta be politically correct nowadays. Yeah. Then maybe we can see you on the channel more. Mm. 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 Maybe we'll take a vote. Who do you like better, Chris or Paul? Oh, <laughs> oh, that's bad. That's bad. <laughs> You know that's uh that's that's not only pitting two people against each other, but that's that's a sibling rivalry thing, right? Yeah. And everybody's gonna go. I didn't know they were related. Not that we look anything alike or anything, but well. Yeah. And then it's also bad because I'm pitting my bosses between each other. <sighs> Maybe we can get you more on the channel since you don't like to be on the channel. I have to run all the equipment. Wah wah Dang wah. It. Yet you're running the equipment from this video. Just for this. Oh, just just for this. Mm -hmm. You know, you got all this film, and then you cut half the logo out. Well, you realize if I had the whole logo in there, you would be like this tall. It'd be like 20 foot above your head mm -hmm. of emptiness. I'm just hoping you got close enough to see all those wrinkles you put in it. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> Try to do something nice. <sighs> this one doesn't have wrinkles in it. It's also this big on a totally flat surface. Oh. Do you see the, bump? we're making Do you see the bumps in the wall? Now we're making Do you excuses. see the bumps in the wall? Mm-mm. You, you don't see those bumps. The wall's smooth. That's a lie. <laughs> can you all... Can... Yes, they can probably see it. It's 4K. I'm sure they can probably see the bumps. Yeah. They're looking at it on a phone screen. Nobody uses a computer. I do. You're weird, though. That's not what we're talking about it's right now. It's not unwrong, though. I quit. <laughs> <laughs>